Hi folks, welcome back. Um, filming here in the shed today. Um, we are starting to see the uh, the reversal of some of these COVID-19 restrictions, um, which is really, really good news that, um, you know, everyone's been doing the right thing and, and uh, keeping the infection rates low. Um, it also means that we are now seeing parks um, like my local uh, dam here, Barranjuk Dam, um, reopening for day trippers. Uh, we slipped up there yesterday and um, yeah, got into a couple of yellows. Um, they're still holding up uh, fairly high. There's a stack of redfin up uh, up high. Um, wherever you find those reddies, just hang about that area. You'll uh, you'll soon find where those yellows are hanging out. Um, we managed quite a few yesterday that were just, you know, they were sort of sitting out wide of the timber um, and just basically harassing those bait schools and um, if you timed it well enough with your plastic grubs, you just roll straight up in front of them and they'd, uh, they'd just smack it. So, um, you know, we, we bounced from tree to tree, didn't do that good on that. So we, uh, we just started chasing around the bait and, and that's how we got them. Anyway, it got me thinking about a video um, that I wanted to do because I have been asked about uh, venting the golden perch through summer. I've done some clips and um, yeah, a couple of guys asked, you know, what are you doing there? Why, why are you sticking that noodle in? Are you tagging that fish? Um, so I'm, I'm venting them. I'm venting their swim bladder. Um, a really important step if you're going to put a golden perch in your live well for any period of time to, to noodle them. If you're vertically fishing timber, you're pulling them out of, I don't know, anything from five metres and deeper. Um, it's really important if you start getting them out of 10 metres of water, which does happen through the middle of summer, and it also will start to happen as the water cools down. Because those fish are going to drop down into the thermoclines, um, because that water is going to be slightly warmer, there's going to be a little bit more food for them to eat at that level, and they're going to follow that down because the water temp is going to cool from the surface because your overnight lows are, are going to get frosty. We've had a couple of frosts already, so this is going to come into play for winter time as well if you're keen enough to get out there and chase them, which I will be, because I love these guys. Um, they're just bloody great fun. You can catch them all year round. Winter time does slow down a little bit, but it's a, it's a really good time to refine your skills with your sounders um, and just, you know, just concentrate on what they're doing and, and really try and work them out. So um, we'll, go, we'll get into it here. Um, I've already marked out on my paper cutout here and I will chuck in a, a clip um, from an earlier video where a lot of these questions did come from um, and, and show you how I've done it with that fish as well but this is basically a cut out of a golden perch um, which I've printed out and you can see there I've already marked my spot there where I'm going to vent this fish um, the swim bladder you know sort of runs from here all the way down through here so if we look at that fish there and we fold this page over there's your swim bladder there. All right, so if we were to just overlay that, we can see that his swim bladder, you know, is all in this area here. This is probably the, you know, getting around the center of it, um, which is why we, we aimed at vent in that area. Um, it's a pretty easy way to figure it out. You go a finger or two behind that uh, fin there, um, just in line or just above the top line of it and um and vent him in there so you can see there our golden perch and that's what their swim bladder is going to look like and the reason we vent them is that swim bladder expands as they get pulled up from you know five to ten meters down the pressure is different the swim bladder expands and you've got all these internal organs um you know intestines kidneys all that sort of stuff around that area it's going to put pressure on them and damage their internal organs you might have seen it yourself, you pull a fish up, you put him in the deck, within 30 seconds or so, you'll see, um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it's, you know, stress, you'll see it start to sort of hemorrhage around the fins. Um, that's the pressure of the swim bladder pushing against that fish's body. It's, you know, bursting blood vessels and doing all sorts of damage. Um, you might have caught a fish, you've tried to release it, it might swim back down. It looks like it wants to swim, but just can't get down. That's because it's holding this extra pressure like a balloon being blown up and it just can't swim down against it. So this is how we vent them. I've got an 18 gauge um, hypodermic needle, which I, uh, I buy these 20 at a time from my local vet. Um, I don't leave home. If I'm fishing golden perch vertically, 
I won't leave home without them. Um, and I do, little trick here, um, which I haven't seen anyone do before, is to have a piece of wire which runs up the guts, a little bit fiddly there. You want it to be, you want it to be fairly tight on the inside diameter of that needle. We'll get it here in a sec. Right, once it's in there, you know, it doesn't really need to come out again. Um, but what that does is, is stops that uh, needle from being blocked up. When you're sticking it in under the scale and through the flesh, you can just stick it in, that'll just float around. You pull that out and pssst, it'll fizz. All right, so the way we do it, a bit of foam back in there. I've got my fish laying on the deck. I'm gonna go in on a 45 degree angle underneath that scale. Then we're gonna straighten it up and we're gonna plunge it in there like that. Then we're gonna pull that out. That air's gonna fizz. You're gonna release the pressure from that swim bladder. All right, you just pull that out again, job's done. That fish will now swim around in your live well all day. As long as he's got cool oxygenated water in that tank, he's gonna swim. So, very important. Like I said, through summertime it happens heaps um, because they go deep. But like I said, also in wintertime, which we're coming into now, they're gonna get deeper. And if you're gonna get out there and chase them and keep them in a well, because you fight pretty hard in wintertime to find good numbers that are feeding. So if you come across one, you might wanna put him in your live well to save Spook and the rest of them. Because if you drop a fish back in, the other fish that are there are likely to chase him off and, and you've sort of ruined that spot. So if you're gonna do that, give them a fizz and give them a vent. Um, when you're finishing that spot, let them go. Or if you wanna take them home for food, you can leave them in your live well all day. Bleed him out when you're just about ready to go and, and take the fillets off him. So anyway, that's how we do it. We'll have a look at that, uh, that fish now on that other video and, and show you how it's done, uh, done with the live fish. Thanks for watching folks and um, yeah, give us a thumbs up and, uh, and hit that subscribe button to, um, to catch some, some more handy tips. And we'll keep him coming. Pump him up, pump him up. Oh yeah, that's why we're having trouble. That's why we're having trouble. Oh yes. Oh yeah, how's that? Unreal. All right, before I do anything, I'm gonna vent this fish. So hand goes on there. You feel him tense up if he's gonna buck. And just slip that under the scale there. That's a little hypodermic needle. I think it's an 18 gauge. Very important. Very important step this. In there like that. And there we go. That's releasing the uh, air pressure out of the swim bladder. And he's going to feel a lot better. He's going to kick here in a second. Now I do that before, as you can see, before I even get the hooks out, which can be a bit risky because there is a hook there you could get jagged on, especially with a stinger in there. Settle down, mate. But that is the best way to look after your fish. It really is a matter of seconds, not minutes, before the barotrauma kicks in. You can see here, this little bit of red here. A little bit of stress already coming through but I know that I've released that uh, swim bladder and um, he's gonna be nice and healthy we'll put him on a measure and um